So if, if you can speak up, if speaking up would work in, in a few times, in, yeah, if it could a work, then it pays. You sometimes. study the environment. <laughs> yes, it pays sometimes yes. to like. Okay, you look just at you know the mind. most seniors. Yes. If they are persons with wisdom, who welcome, please. yeah, with wisdom, wisdom. it's very key. Yeah, it's because very I honestly key. Be- believe that it's always good to express yourself when you can because it it reduces the resentment. There are some things that just happen when you don't talk. Yes. So sometimes, if you can talk, if you think it's still necessary to talk, please speak up. Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about a very crucial topic that affects medical students, medical practitioners, particularly young doctors, and it's about toxicity in medical training. Now, this is not just common in our clan. It happens in many places in the world where there is a training platform, you know, for doctors, just that in more developed climes, it would reflect in more subtle, subtle ways but at least i know within africa within like the asian regions we see it in its um, rawest form if i'll put it that way so we'll be gaining insight into the perspective of a medical intern a house officer that we're privileged to have on the platform today dr also noma she also happens to be a dance enthusiast and also a natural hair ambassador. Um, you're welcome to the channel. I'm delighted to have you today. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. All right. So could you tell us just a bit about your journey in medical training so far? Okay, generally, the journey. I was very, very anxious when the whole house job thing started. In fact, for the first three weeks, I was... I hated it. I wanted to go home. I just wanted to close the chapter and just yeah. run away because it was revealing so many of my weaknesses. It was so it was hard for me to like blend in. I was still figuring myself out, getting used to the system, getting used to the new environment. So initially it was very, very stressful. But along the way, I'm very, very grateful. I want to believe I did my house job in a very, very well equipped um, facility and mm-hmm. in a facility that has Top dogs, if we sure. call it that. So oh, it has been like, it has been an experience that has really taught me. As in, how are you a naturalista? Do you live in Abuja and have you been struggling to just find the perfect salon to handle your natural hair? Well, I've come with great news for you. Um, I'm here to tell you about Pinky's Natural Hair Salon. They offer services such as deep conditioning, protein deep conditioning, moisture deep conditioning, natural hair styling, kids' hair do, locking and various forms of natural hair services. And you'll find them at Suite 6, number 19, Custom Quarters, along the University of Abuja Teaching Hospital Road, Wagwalada, Abuja. You're welcome. Like, deepened my knowledge and understanding about cl- clinical practice. And it has also helped me to know, to see that, actually, I still know stuff. It's not like you're so, like... Yeah, I get to yeah. perfectly. So, now, beyond the experience, what has... Um, Picked your interest to talk about something like this topic, you know, toxicity in medical training. Okay, so what has piqued my interest would be how, like, how my experience has been depending on which team or which unit, and yeah. in, like, you find that you'd have different experiences because of the environment that you're in. So I've been privileged allow me to use the word privilege to have experienced the two sides i've experienced what it feels like to be in a toxic space yeah. but thankfully not for a long time and for the most of my house job experience i've been able to also experience what it is to be in a very very healthy um work environment so yeah. so it's those are the things that have yeah, my so, interest. so i think that's really paramount because it reflects two things you know we have a systemic toxicity and we have a form of toxicity that is enhanced by individuals so systemic in the sense that you know there are really no policies that protect young doctors or draw the line from where seniors should not cross you know so to say so there is a loophole that now enables people to take advantage of that and throw what we call toxicity on younger doctors and so the angle now you're coming from is the fact that there are some teams or some units that you would enter into a, in, in a posting 
and you know it's like this maybe six weeks or three months is going to be hell based on what people have you know maybe yeah. told you prior to coming into that space yeah and you know the crazy thing is that sometimes eh, work might even be so small but if you're in an environment that is toxic you would feel so draining yeah you might not even have up to 10 five patients maybe you just have three patients but yeah. the environment is it makes you work on your toes it's you, you're not relaxed yeah, you're not you're relaxed not. on the contrary you can also be in a, a part of a team that maybe has a it's lot of patients. work but you're excited going to work yeah. because the environment just makes you give your best you don't yeah. feel stressed out about it so i it just made me realize that you know what environment is very very a lot. very important beyond the workload yeah. yes. as we like to put yeah, it it's the so environment important. counts so do you have a specific incident you want to share or a moment that really highlighted the issue of toxicity for you personally <laughs> ah, you know things about sharing <laughs> yeah i can imagine well, but yeah we're not calling names so yeah, we're, we're not calling names yeah. but um if i'm going to talk about toxicity i also want to talk about where i had it good too sure sure okay so maybe i'll start with the good parts yeah let me use pediatric surgery okay i keep saying pediatric surgery is one of my best postings but a lot of people have bad well not bad experiences but pediatric surgery is very 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 busy very for anybody busy. that has done pediatric so, surgery is a yeah, very very <laughs> it's a very 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 busy department but funny enough that happens to be one of my best um departments the senior registrar at that time was ah he made the experience so beautiful like you can never see him frown he's always smiling when he's doing his work he's very approachable very willing to learn even if you make mistakes nobody's going to like he will reprimand you when you do wrong but not in a way that um provokes fear but rather mm. once makes you want to give your best right he yeah. puts you at spots that would allow you to channel your like some areas of yourself that you didn't even know where within so those experiences even with the heavy workload made it really it made the environment so welcoming like you imagine working with somebody stressful but even your senior is not frowning like there's no and even the things you complain about he's not complaining about it and he's also ready to reduce the stress for you by being yeah. available and being ready to answer questions and you know just is so that way that environment allows you thrive as a doctor. I want to believe I was I was able to thrive. I was able to learn. I was able to really see that I have strength beyond my tiredness. But you see, when you're when you're in a toxic environment, the slightest tiredness will give you will pro, pro, provoke you to exhaustion and also affect how you interact with your patients, patients. how you interact with your colleagues. So in the same surgery department, I also experienced. That's where I feel like I had my most toxic experience. But thankfully, it was just nine days. Because, in fact, that was the very first time I saw myself have a panic attack. Wow. So in this, this toxic environment, what was happening is that they would always compare me to one of the house officers. Like, see how this person is doing this thing. Can't you be like this person? Da, 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 da. Like, just comparing. Nothing you ever do is right. Even when you're trying... You know, there's always something to complain about. And eh, why would you talk to me like that? No, 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 no. Ah, so you, you just be what you just try to be careful, careful. If they ask you questions, you tiptoes. it's not like you don't even know the question because you're so for me, oh, because I was so frightened, I would not even be able to talk. I'll just go mute. And you know, some people handle these things differently. Me, yeah. I just feel like I think it's not a good thing, but. Any emotion I feel is so readable in my face and in the way I carry myself. Like, you can always tell. So, some things are so difficult to conceal. So, in all the experience, you could just tell that I was drained, I was tired, and I was trying to be so careful because I didn't want an extension. Because when you're in that environment, you'll be threatened with things yeah, like sure. extension, this one, that one. So, God, I could not wait to leave, and it was only nine days. Pediatric surgery, I spent almost four weeks doing it. And uh, even after I left, I was coming back small more to join yeah. the team. Like, <laughs> and it was a busy team. This team, it was low-key busy, but not even as busy as pediatrics. But the environment, you cannot just... There, there was no inter... Inter... Like, what's the word now? The relationship between colleagues, juniors the and seniors. Dynamics. It was just very poor. It was like military. 
maybe even military might even have better i don't know it was just draining it was yeah. just, every day i could not just wait to leave work hmm. so I can imagine so like so, so you highlighted two things in addition to the experience you mm. talked about maybe not so you talked about um extensions yeah. yeah yeah and another thing you know house officers usually dread is extra calls so the, the question now would be why do you think such things exist in the training is it justified why why do you think such things exist for me i think that uh, some people have different mentalities on how to bring out the best in people for some people they might feel like comparing you to somebody else is a way of bringing out the best in you generally they might not mean bad but it might just be the way that they know the way they understand maybe a way they believed they believe made them who they are but maybe if they had tasted something different they would have been better than how better. they are honestly but then also doing that kind of thing repeatedly is detrimental is. even if they so maybe someone does that once like oh this person once is enough but when every day you know it now starts sounding like a broken record every day you're being compared i mean that's very unhealthy for any individual it is, it is. but like i said i think the reason is just how people feel viewed people like how some people like there are some people that just believe that the best way to correct somebody is by shouting maybe it has worked for them it has worked in different ways but i don't nice. believe that fear brings out the best in a person yeah. because fear is. can limit you from even asking making questions asking yeah questions. making questions you know showing your flaws that needs to be shown because that's the only way you can correct yourself and that's why the one year period at least for yeah. house officers you it's, know is there for you to learn on that supervision, supervision yeah. yes so yes. you should be able to feel not that you should be freely consciously making mistakes but you should be you should be able to be free enough to know that okay even if you make this mistake it's going to be a process that will build you up for better because what fear does is that even when you, you you're just so scared that yeah you're not making mistakes and if you don't make mistakes you're not going to learn there's yeah, no ad advancement that's happened without anybody making a mistake Very true. even surgical procedures have developed over time because they've seen the mistakes in those procedures so mistakes will be made and you would have to learn from them so i don't think it's fair to make an environment too fearful because fear does not allow people to thrive at all at all it does not but rather having a peaceful environment having an interactive environment it doesn't mean that you would you would um you would um be too lenient that people begin to take you for granted sure. there are there's order there's limit to everything but yeah. people should be allowed to express themselves so you can really see what you need to touch what you need to change what you need to fix what needs attention as a teacher as in coming from a senior's perspective yeah. not when you're around everybody just shaking shaking anything you do they're like yes sir yes sir yes sir a lot of pretense comes with that yeah so yeah. and and just to add to that um i think the system also existing policy wise may be kind of faulty yeah so you know of course it's documented that you know extensions are allowed in the whatever document we'll call it let me not call any name and it's supposed to come from consultants ideally who yeah. are the persons you know doing the training directly but these days extensions extra calls can come from almost anyone there is no regulation as to who that comes from and i think it's something that needs to be looked into and you know we on the other hand can understand that we are dealing with human lives so there needs to be modalities of discipline in yes, place yes. yeah because not sadly not everyone you know takes work with utmost dignity there might be one or two persons who want to cut corners and or definitely there should be disciplinary measures in place but not something that puts the patient further at risk and also puts the doctor at risk because imagine you've done call for let's say 48 hours because we had one example recently that trended in a twitter space or x space as it's currently called where a doctor finished a 48 hours call and then was given an extra call now assuming that extra call was to happen on the same day you know how it feels when you are tired like very tired you you know the patient is not getting your best and maybe you're trying to do a procedure and your g3 and you're just you're not fully coordinated in that case you're putting the patient at risk and you also you're at risk what if you're trying to maybe establish an IV access and 
in the process a needle prick you know sets in just because of the loss of coordination in that instance so even if there will be disciplinary modalities we think that it should be something that doesn't put either the doctor or the patient at further risk but um, let's go in further now what are some of the signs of toxicity that trainees you know students should be aware of in relating with those up in the cadre. Okay, well, there's something that you said that just like when you said it was like light bulb. I think one thing is um, there's a thin line between discipline and that toxicity. Some people, I think, is in that bit of trying to instill discipline, discipline. that it now somehow Translates transforms into... and morphs into toxicity. Wait, so, can you just throw more light? Let me just. Okay, so traits is, you know, like you come into a team mm -hmm. and they are let's say four or five residents, you know, three, four consultants. Most times we, we spend most of the time with the residents. And the essence of talking about some of these traits is to know how to manage such people. Because sometimes another thing is you get into a team and you've heard from maybe one or two other persons, oh, this person is very toxic. And if you're the type, maybe you have some element of emotional intelligence, you now make up your mind. I'm going to find a way to navigate you know this particular senior so that um, we don't have the back and forth so for instance a little thing someone is raising his or her voice uh -huh. you maybe during ward rounds nurses are there patients are there and you have someone raising the voice and obviously everybody will be like okay this little issue doesn't warrant you know um such thing or perhaps responsibilities we know are based on levels uh -huh. so there's something that it's expected that perhaps the house officer does but there are a few times where you know okay this is probably above my level let me call and then you're calling and the person is telling you you know go and look for other house officers go and look for other senior house officers but don't call me you know things like that are there others that maybe you want to mention that okay. people should be aware of so that they know how to manage um, such personalities when they come across them Hmm. Hmm. Well, you know, uh, another thing is that people perceive toxicity differently. Yeah. But me, if someone is always shouting, just people that might be shouting a lot, but then doesn't make them toxic. I think one of the things is not just being a listener. Like maybe you don't give people room to explain themselves. Yeah. That can create that kind of toxic environment. Um. We're still talking on treats, right? Um, yeah, then that someone that always compares to that. Okay, I, if, if you know how much I hate comparison, I think that's just a very, very terrible way to work because people have different strengths. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it and when you begin to compare people, if you're not able to appreciate them for the value that they can that actually they bring, give, even if they are giving value, you're not even able to see because it's because there's a model that you have in your head that you're comparing with you may not really see what this person has to do so a senior that is always comparing you someone that doesn't give you the opportunity to explain yourself you know and perhaps someone also okay an environment where you're always threatened like any little yes, thing you get threats, an extension yes you get an any extra like, call any little or thing that, insults, that can be very like, yes you know there are some this is where you did you're just insulted for no reason some i don't i just some of them they might even it might be joking to yeah, joke. You know how this your, things trend online sometimes. You're, you're like, what about. is the worst thing your consultant has said to you? Yeah. And someone will be like, oh, it's like you left your brain at home. And yeah, it sounds words. funny, but those things that's actually it. get to the yeah. individual. So maybe I'll just leave it down to those three. Comparing the words, the kind of words that you tell people. If there are words that are condescending, you will not allow them to thrive. Yeah. If you want to correct somebody, you can highlight something wrong that they did, but not in a way that define like you're using that experience or that moment of um doing something wrong to define their entirety as a person or their professionalism it would really you know it may not allow some people to thrive mm -hmm. and then you know raising your voice and just you know sorry not raising your voice out my own three is comparison the kind of words you use and not giving people room to like explain themselves because sometimes when you allow them to explain themselves you can it improves your level of understanding with this um, colleague that you're working with because yeah. either ways while there is a hierarchy we are still colleagues to an extent and True. it's Definitely. fair that you're able to give someone a listening ear to really understand 
what is going on. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So mm -hmm. let's talk solutions. What can institutions, the hospitals, as the case may be, what modalities can they put in place to curtail the excesses that exist? And when you say modalities, like actual um, maybe policies systems, or guidelines, orientations, okay. guidelines okay. from time to time, like, okay, these people are your colleagues. That's why the fact that they are your younger colleagues. Um, you have to treat everybody maybe with dignity, stuff like that. What can be done to protect younger doctors from what mm. we have currently? Mm. Okay. Well, I think one of the things is just giving avenues or allowing, creating an environment that welcomes the opinion of a young doctor because those are still um, experiences that will boost your confidence, right? And mm -hmm. while, even while you may highlight your flaws, it will also boost your confidence. Like when they create avenues for you to express yourself. So let, uh, let's see. So because something that happens sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, as we've seen is maybe a senior and a younger doctor has, they have an issue mm -hmm. and it gets to the table of a more senior person. Mm. It's almost assumed in most instances that the younger doctor was wrong. Mm. But there are a few persons who would also want to hear from this younger doctor yeah. what happened. Yeah. Feel free, tell yeah. me. Yeah. And even if there was already a pending punishment, they would reverse it because yeah. they feel like, okay, he did not warrant, you know, such weight of punishment. So if it's in that light, I think that that would be very good if um, every attend in every consultant to give room you know yeah, for listen. younger doctors to listen yeah, to listen and to just really let's know your point of view let's yeah. understand you from your angle your opinion is welcome your suggestion is welcome even both to criticism and this criticism that is constructive yeah so that's the one that should work on because in the end it's about building us to be like to be more responsible in the profession yeah, so, character. yeah so you have if you must be worthy in character then you should be able to express your character so that your character can be pruned mm -hmm. so you if you're concealing all those because when you create a toxic space per se creates room for camouflage mm -hmm. and what you end up correcting is something that is not even there because people are covering themselves up and when they become seniors they now begin to project the areas actual. that were not able to be tamed because they were consuming those parts. So yeah, I think giving an avenue where people can freely, you know when they say freedom of speech, like actually that right to expressing yourself and not feeling like you'll be harmed after that expression, yeah. you know. But us on our own angle, it's not that we should take advantage of it and of become course. rude, you know. In the end, it's just to create an avenue for the overall well-being of the profession and both for ourselves and people coming and even for the seniors. Because they always say that, we might be the doctors of their children, yeah. right? And even yeah. their own doctors in future. So if anything that happens up there will affect us down here and even cause a ripple effect backwards as well. So yeah. how we carry ourselves in each phase would come back to affect us. So yeah, it's always important so, to create that room where people can express themselves and be refined through the process of correction and criticism if they say anything wrong. So, we're gradually wrapping up. What advice would you give to medical trainees or that young doctor currently experiencing toxicity, quote unquote, in his or her posting or team, wherever he or she is now? <laughs> okay, right now, I don't know if I'm the best person to give advice because I honestly don't even handle my own well. <laughs> if I date it back, God, ah, no, I didn't handle my mind, ended in a panic attack. I mean, just running away when I had the opportunity to run out of that thing. So, but then I would say on your own part, as in as a young doctor, it's good to be humble and respectful because that's the only way that you are able to learn, even when things are really bad. Like it allows you to receive the least you can receive from that toxic environment. And then also, if you can create your own environment, like. How I put it, there, there's only much you can do. Like you can't really affect how someone will talk to you. You can't really have so you can't really control how a person will speak to you, and you can't really control the words that a person will say to you, but you can control how you process them and how you take them in. So while we are yet to get to that stage where we have strong 
policies that protect us in that in based on mental health and toxicity i think we should be able to strengthen ourselves maybe have people that we can maybe having people you can talk to can reduce the effect of something terrible that you heard or how someone treated you you know so create your own environment that creation of your own environment means maybe having people you can talk to when you feel anxious having um a sense of confidence in yourself even if someone wants to talk down on you you're still you still know where you are coming from yeah. and your focus is still on that better version of yourself that you can mm -hmm. see you know just creating your own filter not taking everything that anybody yeah. tells you because develop a tough skin <laughs> at some point you yeah need it. not tough in a way that makes you create that you know when you see you become a senior you now become that yeah, yeah, yeah. toxic not that person not, tough. but the tough that still ensures that you thrive Yes. Even in that and you toxicity. don't own an identity that is being projected on you yes. like you're not a good doctor yes. you now start feeling less yes. of yourself yes. you need to have some sort of defense yes. uh, against that so and also if, if you can speak up if speaking up would work in, in a few times in, yeah if it could work times. then it pays you sometimes. study the environment <laughs> yes it pays sometimes yes. to like okay, you look at you know the mind. most seniors yes. if they are persons with wisdom, who welcome please. yeah with wisdom, wisdom it's very key yeah, because yeah. I honestly be believe that it's always good to express yourself when you can because it, it reduces the reason. There are some things that just happen when you don't talk. Yes. So sometimes if you can talk, if you think it's still necessary to talk, please speak up. Speak, yeah, up, some point, speak, speak up. Speak up. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for your valuable insights. Um, I hope, I believe that you know our viewers you take one or two things out from this video and at this point i want to know is there any other thing you would have to say to them if well I, know... <laughs> I just want to say thank you for having me and i really really hope that the words that we have spoken here are impactful i hope it's able to help you in your journey at any point that you get to watch this video thank you all right thank you so much Special shout out to all of you. If you engage us in the comment section, I think that's very important. We, it's unlikely that we exhausted everything. If you know you've had experiences, how you've managed those situations, you know, as a doctor, whatever level in the profession you are now, please share in the comment section. There will be one or two persons who, you know, have something to learn. If you're currently in a bad state, you know, maybe mental health wise, it's okay to seek um, therapy. Yeah. so to say either maybe from a circle of friends or from a professional do not let um the effect of the toxicity quote unquote yeah. get to your core as an individual um, the goal is progress not perfection you know in this profession at least until you become a consultant every consultant was once a learner every specialist was once a learner so we are humans mistakes will happen we hope it's not the kind of mistakes you know that would lead to any catastrophe per se so as much as we're chasing perfection know that in your little way you're doing well and just keep striving for progress um, i'll see you next time on the series on steady waters difficult conversations about medical school and medical practice so till next time thank you bye so so keep